Hello friends and welcome back to our fast API tutorial. Uh, in this video we are going to cover uh, extra models. Uh, this I, I touched on a little bit in the last video. It's going to kind of um, be uh, an extension of uh, some of the sort of stuff that we did up here where we have a base model and we extend it a little bit um, and it, it has you know it shows a little bit of functionality using the uh, the dot dict method that I briefly showed and then I deleted. Uh, again, so we're going to cover it in a little more uh, detail right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to set up our our user in model with a username string, password string, email is going to be an email string, and full name is going to be a string or none equals none. And we are going to set a user out base model, which will be the same sort of thing. I'm going to copy all of this and get rid of the password because we don't want the password to show up in, uh, in our out model as we saw last time. We're going to say class user in DB base model. Again, we're going to paste what we copied. This though is going to be a hashed password. We're going to kind of create a fake hashing method, which we're going to do right now. We, I'm going to do right now. You're not, I mean, you might be doing it, but you might be just watching. Fake password hasher, raw password is going to be a string. And we are going to just return super secret. If I can spell correctly, you know what? Let me make it an F string. Raw password. It's a very, very fancy password hasher. Let's set up a def fake save user. User in is going to be a user in. Hashed password equals fake password hasher. User in dot password. User in DB is going to be a user in DB. And we're going to use our user in dot dict method hashed password equals hashed password. And I'm going to show you what that is in just a second. Print user saved, sort of, not really, but sort of. Return user in DB. And then let's create a route. App dot post user is going to be response model is user out. Uh, if you remember, we wanted to have a response model that did not actually return the password. Um, even the hash password, we don't want any password, hashed or not hashed. Uh, plain text would be egregiously bad, but at the very least, we don't want any password. We're gonna call this async def create user. User in is going to be user in user saved equals fake save user user in return user saved okay now let's um let's take a look first and see what um this user in dot dict method does okay so we are going to um let's go in here and let's look at um, print user in dot dict. Okay, so what this does, this is a, a um, pydantic method that will convert your object into a dictionary. That's as simple as that. Now, if we go ahead and look at this, we try it out, we're just gonna hit execute. And you'll notice we get user in dict is this whole thing down here. Okay. Now, the way we're going to use this, we can use this um, double asterisk operator. Hold on, let's see if it's got an official name. Double asterisk operator. Double star. I guess it's just called double star. Okay, then. Um, this is effectively, if you're familiar with JavaScript, this is um, akin to the, um, the spread operator. 
so this is the sort of thing where we would have const um, user in db equals dot 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 user in and then hashed password equals hashed password. And we'll tab this in a little bit. So that's that's effectively what the user in dot dict method is doing with the double star operator as it's officially called. Okay. Now the reason we have to do this is because this user in db, if if we were just going to pass it in like this, it should break. Fingers crossed. Let's find out. Uh, let's scroll down to the bottom. Execute internal server error. Perfect. Grand. Great. This is what we expected to happen. Because this is a dictionary object. If you're instantiating a user in DB object, you need to set username equals, hash password equals, email equals, full name equals, and so on and so forth. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to spread out those fields. So if we now... Um, Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it allows us to do. Instead of passing in a dictionary as the object here, I was trying to think of a, a way, like an, an analogy that I could show you, but that's pretty much um, as straightforward as it is. This will extract the key value pairs and pass them in so that we can actually instantiate this object. That's pretty much the flow of it here. Okay, now that's one step. Um, what we are going to do is we are actually let me just finish up with with one thing here you'll notice that what's happening here is here let's um if we scroll back up here i want to actually point this out really quickly so you notice we had username password email and full name so we're spreading out those fields right here and we're passing in a hashed password as well. We are not, um, we're not actually pulling in the password right here. So what this ends up doing, if we wanted to, um, let me put it right up here really quickly. Um, print user in DB. Uh, username equals hello. Uh, we'll say email equals hello at world.com. Hashed password equals password. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't need a full name. We're going to say hello equals world and foo equals bar. So what's going to happen, and if we print, oh yeah, we're already printing it out, it's going to ignore these. So it's only going to pull in the fields that we need. I hope. I hope it should ignore them. Let's see. Execute. There we go. Username is hello. Hash password is password. Email is hello world. Full name is none. Because we're having a default right here. We're setting it equal to none. So you can pass in as many fields as you want to. So we don't have to worry about pulling out this the password field from the user in. It will just ignore it because it's not one of the fields that's set up in our base model right here. Okay, that was that that one thing that I wanted to show you. Now, let's get back to uh, reducing some of the duplication. So we can do that in a similar manner to what I did in the last video. So we're going to have our base, our, our user base that we'll call it class user base, base model. And this will contain the username, the email, and it will contain the full name because we want that on every single model that we're setting up. Now user in will import from user base. It will inherit, not import. I've said that a lot of times recently. Uh, this will also inherit from user base and we don't need any of these fields because those are already in the base. So we're just going to set this to not set it to pass. We're just going to say pass. And here we're going to inherit from user base. And we want the hashed password to be an extra field. Okay. So now this, this allows for a little bit cleaner code. Each, um, each model here has its own specific purpose. It has our common fields. 
and only things that are specific to those fields we're going to declare in those models themselves. Okay, so let's touch on one or two more things very quickly before I end this video. Uh, next, we're going to uh, look at uh, union types. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So we're going to set up um, class base item, base model. Description is going to be a string. Type is going to be a string. Class car item will inherit from base item. And we're going to say type equals car. And class plane item is going to also inherit from base item. And then we are going to say type. Why can't I type? Type, type, type equals plane. My goodness. And size is going to be an int. OK. Now let's set up a, uh, a very small dictionary of items. Items is going to be item 1 with a description and I'm not going to I'm not going to actually say this because I can't say it without singing it and I'm not going to sing to you people you've not you've not earned hearing my singing voice yet uh, but I do appreciate Sebastian having a sense of humor here item two for those of you who don't get the reference, just look up the song Lowrider, okay? That's all I have to say. But I'm not I'm not singing it. And this one I'm also not singing. I'm a late 30s. My 40th birthday is going to be in a few months, so it makes sense that I would like the chili peppers, so I do enjoy this reference as well, but I also will not be singing this. I'm sorry. And apparently this this aeroplane has a size of five because that's a thing. Okay, you can have size five aeroplanes. Aeroplanes. Okay, let's set up another route. At dot get items item ID. Uh, let's set up a response model equals union plane item car item. And I don't know if I actually um, uh, imported it before, but it comes from the typing module or a typing package. Package. Yeah, the typing package. Sorry, I get package module mixed up sometimes. Async def read item. Item ID is a string and return items item ID. Let's save. Let's refresh our page, see what it looks like. One, two, three. Oh my goodness, it breaks. Why does it break? Anyone? Bueller? It's because this is going to be a key here. So what I like to do in a situation like this, I'm just going to make this a literal. Item one, item two. And this will then force it in our our docs right here. It has to be item one or item two. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, since we're using Python 3.10, instead of union, we can just do this. Well, as you can see, my IDE is yelling at me. We cannot do that. We can do that in other places. This is a valid union if um, you're doing something like this. It works there, but if you're setting the response model here, you have to do it using the um, the union operator. So this is the option that will work right there. Okay, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. I you know I I don't make these rules. I don't know who made these rules, um, but whatever. Okay, now let's do one more um, class list item base model, nope, base model, name is a string, description is a string, uh, list items equals a list, duh, not duh, you might not have realized that, 
the name is going to be foo for the first one description is going to be another cheeky cheeky uh, description from our friend Sebastian the name on the first one is foo the name on the second one is red description it's my aeroplane I don't know I, I've got to imagine most people get this reference um, if you don't um, it's a Foo Fighters song hence Foo and they're okay sorry you know there might be one or two people I don't want anyone to feel stupid watching this app.get list items because uh, yeah I've already got items here but whatever it's just better to be explicit in this sort of situation response model equals list item there we go async def read items return items so we refresh our page list items you can see we get a very nice uh, visual of what our response model is going to look like if I get rid of this actually let me just comment it out refresh and you see now it looks like a string okay so just just showing a little bit extra of what we can do using fast API and Pydantic okay and then we will do one final generic here app dot get um, arbitrary arbitrary response model equals dict string float async def get arbitrary why did I, that's a weird a, a weird thing that I just did there I, I tried typing it with two R's twice well four R's I guess if you think about it return foo one bar um, hello now let's see what happens this might actually work because I don't think it's gonna actually give us a problem oh it does because it tries to convert it to a float okay perfect perfect let's make this a two and see if it works there we go so it converted it to a float okay and you can see here um, let's uh, clear this and look at our schema so it's showing us we have an arbitrary dictionary um, this is telling us that we want the key to be a string and we want the value to be a float uh, again it doesn't have to explicitly be a float we can have it as a string but it must be able to be converted to a float um, we uh, you know if we wanted to actually name it it would show up in the schema here but since we're just passing a generic that's why it shows additional prop one additional prop two additional prop three okay so that was kind of it um, you know again more uh, more information about you know how we can add stuff to the to the uh, open API schema so that we can you know for those of us who are using our API that we're designing it can be a little bit more helpful for them uh, we're gonna expand on this in the next video uh, next video will hopefully be a shorter one um, it's going to talk about uh, HTTP status response codes response status codes status response response status whatever doesn't matter the order it really doesn't it's been a long day for me I'm sorry friends okay I will see you in the next video